3.24 PTU is upon us, and some ancient promises have been fulfilled, and some exciting new things have happened. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to my long-term subscribers. Apologies for the small hiatus, uh, especially because it was quite a drought in SC content. But let's get on with it. So this is the extra large arrow view hanger, and you do not get a choice currently. I, if I had a choice, I would pick Rebel in York for the record. That's what I had in the past when this was a long time ago. The noise you're hearing appears to be a glitch from nearby other hangers of players, and MP I'm guessing NPCs as well. And as you notice, the hangar is awfully close to what you've already seen in the past. It has the medical drops, it has cargo things, but those cargo things actually work now. You have the, still have the medical drops on both ends, you have an elevator access on both ends, and the ability to spawn vehicles, and in this case ships right now, for just right now, uh, just ships, from both ends and from the sides of this massive, massive hangar. This is large enough where it probably would be warranted to have a Grey Cat PTV, a lot like the old days of the hangar module back before the PUE visit existed. I wanted to, I picked up a Microtech t-shirt as a test of this new storage system. And as you can see, it still updates and it's visible down here. The way it works is you would drag that shirt to the left side of that, key, of that UI you just saw, and then you hit open the storage. And so it appears at the base. You can pick it up or wear it and whatnot from there. So this is the way you queue things up. You use an ASOP terminal, just like you would use upstairs. Uh, but when you, after you ride the elevator down, you pick out your ship. And you do not need to use the elevator upstairs any longer. In fact, if you're at home, I would recommend not using the ASOP upstairs because on previous builds, uh, some of the notes were talking about uh, glitches where if you use the ASOP that is upstairs, and then you already had a hangar and such downstairs, it could uh, glitch things out and cause some trouble. So, I tested a pretty big ship. I says, well, let me try a Carrick or something like that. And uh, it's the same deal. You go and you deliver it first. And then you retrieve it. Now, when you actually do retrieve it, it's quite a light show. So, the caution signs are more of just a suggestion. I don't recommend falling into the elevator, um, which thankfully I obviously did not. Um, but I do want to note that it's quite a large elevator space. So if you are putting flare items and storage and cargo around the edges of vehicles in the future, uh, what you're going to want to bear in mind is uh, it's a big, big elevator. <laughs> So, I mean, the scale of this space is astronomical. Also, it does seem to play games with the advanced camera mechanism. So the advanced camera mechanism is something a lot of us use heavily to check for damage on a ship, uh, do cinematics, uh, get a group shot, um, <laughs> check to see if, uh, if the NPCs are really dead as they say they are or they're not, around a corner type of thing. <laughs> um, there's a lot of uses for an advanced camera, good, bad, otherwise. Obviously, it's a test-based game now, right now, in the alpha. But um, the uh, advanced camera is, like, pushed out of the way. It seems like the elevator has, like, a cylinder of some sort or whatnot. That pull See this? It's pulling it in. In fact, at that point, I was nervous that, like, my character was going to be, like, auto-walking or pushed into the elevator space. So I was very careful. It's quite a drop into there. Now, you are in a um, what, what should be a safe zone. However, there is no armistice. You can pull out a weapon and shoot. And right now, I do want to add the disclaimer that, as I understand it, uh, other players can move items around your area. They can't, like, pick them up. As I understand it, they can't, like, pick up a flare item and just steal it. But they can mess with your stuff. So, if you're very sentimental, you might want to wait a couple builds. Remember, this is the PTU Wave 1. So, uh, once again, it's not like you're ever going to lose-lose anything at all. <laughs> but it is interesting. Another thing that I've heard is that players uh, have been glitched through freight elevators in some cases. And then they end up in another player's uh, uh, hangar. And then you can shoot inside a hangar. You gain a crime stat, but you're inside like a private hangar 
So eventually they're going to need like NPC guards that can come through the elevators, I guess, and come and like, you know, fight off the bad guys or put the armistice zone back in. Uh, I'm not quite sure. But I think this is a symptom of the fact that these are in these are kind of sort of instanced, uh, these, these hangar areas, where it's like pulled away from where the rest of things are. So it's easier for your, the server to handle you and your uh, game to be rendered. You can see a lot of the flare items that used to be the hangers. I'm not going to go through every little section of the hangar. Uh, that's uh, probably best uh, served by Toast. Uh, she does an amazing work going through the, the evaluation of the actual usability of the hangar, uh, industrial versus commercial capacities, those, those kind of things. Uh, but uh, what I what did want to show is the, the practicality side. Like, what are you going to use day to day, right? Um, so the elevator does not function at first. What you need to do is in the bottom left corner, there's an arrow. You hit that arrow and that drops the elevator down to the ground. And uh, that allows you to access your warehouse. So it makes sense. You're sending the elevator to the warehouse. Now, right now, to the left of me, the door will close, lights will go on, and then the, the elevator is missing. It's literally wandered off to the warehouse. The warehouse, if you're wondering, is a place where everything is available. So everything you have at that location. So if, say, you set your home to New Babbage, when you send that elevator away, you can pull up every single thing you've ever owned, basically. <laughs> that you, other than, like, stuff you bought at, like, a station, let's say. So if you were on this, um, you know, this was, let's say this is live, and you went and you bought a set of armor and a weapon on uh, the Pyro Jump Gate station, you're not going to have a situation where... Uh, you can just grab that if you're over at New Babbage. But if you go to New Babbage and all your subscriber flare gear, your freebies from 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 Luminalia, and uh, gear that you've purchased, what whatever uh, stuff you've earned uh, from the CDF armors, those kind of things, they're all going to just be there already for you to use. And for the record, you don't have to go through this process. Remember the storage bug containers. I showed earlier a little bit of and I'll show more I guess at the end of this just to kind of show it but um, yeah it is what it is so this is a trip down memory lane for me that's the fish tank mark mk1 back from 2014 and the workbench from 2013 and uh, this is me like and also the piano which is um, a, a little bit of a sentimental thing for me all of these to be honest because, uh, for example, the workbench was promised to overclock modules. It was going to have practicality. It never did. It was more for show. It did have a use button. It didn't do anything. Uh, fish tank MK1, sentimental because it's fish fish citizen. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, it was something very, very cool. And it, while you can't put the fish in yet, this is a sign of things to come. And you can move the fish tank into the main hangar already. You can't move the workbench. At least I tried with the pyro multi-tool. Um, the PYT and uh, the right here you'll see the piano as well is I did manage to get it going but it was a little glitched out so if you can't get your tractor beam to work at first so if you right click and shoot sometimes it works and that gives you you know a full HUD and everything well I, I was not able to get it to move with the right click and shoot but I was able to get it to the left click and just snapshot it and move it around. I don't really understand that either. It seems like tractor beams are a little glitched on this build. Uh, but this is the workbench kind of overlapping onto the fish tank and the the um, piano. That's another thing is the hangar mod, the hangar, uh, the warehouse elevator in the hangar seems to be like a little glitchy where you can't, you're supposed to be able to lay those items out and they'll all appear next to each other. But in this case, sometimes they overlap, especially for flare items. I think it may be the case that the flare items are um, not properly in yet. Like some of them can't even be moved out of the freight elevator. So it, they're very glitchy. Now, if you re heavily glitch out your freight elevator, there's another one at the other end. So it's on the, it's, it's, it's caddy corner. So if this one's in the back bottom right, go to the top left and the other one's there. So. There are going to be other solutions where you can bring like whole vehicles in through this, uh, ground vehicles, but uh, that's not available yet in this build as far as I could see.
This is me moving the fish tank MK1. Uh, for those who remember the old hangar module, you remember there was the blue mount points on the ground. As far as I could see, none of that exists yet. And also, another side thing is that, unfortunately, the, you know, the Revel in York's hangar, at the very least, had the overhanging balconies, the second floor. You were in an elevator upstairs, and there was these wonderful places with chairs and tables, and you could fit up all sorts of cool flare items around that and hang out, almost have like a like a living space up there, right next to the ATC terminal. Now, uh, the ATC zone, that wasn't really a terminal. Um, but uh, with this, right now, you can just fit and plop it uh, equipment anywhere. But I would note, if you look to the right of there, that right there is the edge of the elevator. So that white line on the ground is the edge of the elevator space. It's really, really, really big. Uh, so um, you can fit flare items. You can ink take the elevator up and down, and it seems like the stuff will stay there. It did stay there for me. Um, but I use these little white areas, which I'm guessing are built for cargo or vehicle parking or something. Um, I use those as, like, this is a safe spot to put these, and they're not, like, in the way, and they're cool. And uh, that's kind of where I was with this. Now, there are some weird things so i found a fish tank gold i think it's going to come up in a moment but um and the original fish tank mk1 which both have really cool little flare items in them i'll show later in the video and remember you can use chapters to jump around this video so if something like is remedial to you or if you're not really interested in it you just don't have your heart in it uh, you just jump around my feelings won't get hurt <laughs> but um anyway uh the uh the area here as I said, I, snap shooting versus that doesn't seem to work well. Um, I found that if you if you're if you're glitched on your tractor beam, carrying it lowered and then holding the R key allows you to store it. And um, I figured if I can't get it out of the freight where sorry warehouse elevator that carries freight, it's going to take you a little bit to get used to that. Uh, maybe I can like um, utilize them here and test them out. As I said, the workbench has always been big. It didn't look like that at first, if I remember correctly. It was like darker and smaller, and now it's a little bigger. So it suggests to me that they maybe have worked on it in the past and they have intentions to use it. And if you weren't around back then, those are all from the Voyager Direct days where you used to buy a UEC, used to get some in your pack. Oh, if something doesn't work, it'll give you that warning. So the liquor cabinet, for example, the fish for the fish tank, throw a warning where the elevator will not allow you to activate it. It won't, like, break anything. Just, just It'll just say exit it. <laughs> but if you weren't around back in the 2013, 2014 days, Voyager Direct was, like, a store where you could purchase things uh, for your hangar, like flare items and stuff. And even, like, the first uh, handgun it was, just a, it was just a toy, basically, to put into your hangar you could purchase. And uh, they had all sorts of other stuff, too. They had uh, weapons and things, like, to mount to your, to your ship, so you could use them eventually in Arena Commander and other things like that. Um, all sorts of neat stuff. But uh, the, most of the UEC was, like, ex you had to actually buy it because you didn't have enough. So, like, for example, the Grey Cat was, like, I think 15K UEC. But then you'd have to, like, purchase that 15K UEC if you didn't have enough in your pack or you've already spent what was in your pack for the... Uh, other stuff. This is the fish tank gold I was talking about earlier. Um, I, I, this is a clearly, clearly this thing is more is newer and more polished and had some work put into it. And the uh, flare items actually looks older. Funny enough, it looks more retro uh, from the Wing Commander days. Um, if you notice uh, right there, it, it, flare items bump into each other. So hanger flare items. Uh, to uh, push the other ones so be mindful so if you have like an assembled stack and you got further than I did like you were able to get the models that I'm going to try to spawn in a few in a few moments um, and manage to get them in or fish or whatever um, be mindful that if you bump one item with another uh, it might send everything flying with the way physics works in this game right now there's no if, unless something snaps in um, you're going to not want to bump it. So just be mindful of that. And also, like, think this through. If you have people working with you on cargo, 
you really don't want them near like these fragile items, right? That you don't want pumped around and full of cool stuff from your collectibles from your years of play, right? So bear that in mind too. You want these off the beaten path. Now, uh, the way I'm using that is to rotate, is to holding the R key, and then you use the scroll wheel and also just move side to side, up and down, and that kind of rotates it every which way. You'll note with the fish tank MK1, uh, there's no modeled bottom to it because it was meant to just snap in. You walk up to a blue snap point and you just click and go. Whereas the fish tank in gold does have does have a um, does have a bottom to it. Does have fully polished like there there it is. You can see right into the the fish tank. <laughs> you know, uh, it is what it is, and I'm okay with that. It's not like somebody should be flipping these things upside down and throwing them around the uh, the space. <laughs> After all, traditional real-world fish tanks have an open top, usually. Uh, <laughs> this one just happens to have an open bottom, which makes a little less sense, but maybe it has gravitational effects that keep the water in place. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh, so inside, like I said, inside these, these t fish tanks is a nice little touch. There's a old helmet. And the one in the gold uh, is from the Wing Commander days. And the one inside the MK1, I'm not quite sure where it's from. You can see here that as you rotate flare, it does have like a front and a back. So that's something to be mindful of. And um, I think right now the biggest successes is the flare, is the flare is the fish tanks and the Takisuma. Sorry if I butchered that. Uh, model models uh, cases unfortunately I was not able to fill them with the items that they're supposed to have in them but they were there so that is something to keep in mind so as we continue uh, exploring the history of this game and while we uh, explore the 3.24 PTU wave 1 I wanted to note um, some of the more interesting things that uh, started pulling up and that is things like the lamp, the calendar, the cot, uh, the Stellar Sonic jukebox, the towel. Um, and these are things that have a lot of history for everyone. And as these things are able to be pulled the heck out of here, I will go more in depth. But just know this, that the cot was one of the first, that right there, was from my, my when I picked mine up was October 13, 2013. And this was like the first like real world, like, wow. I, I had the cot, I had the gray cat PTV, I had the lamp. Um, I was like, I am made. I am, I am like living inside this beautiful hangar, right? And one of the things that was interesting back then was picking up a bigger ship and a bigger ship and a bigger ship was a good idea to be able to get better and better hangars. Because, like, the self-land storage was BS, and uh, the airview hangar was nice, but the Revel in York was the one that was extremely desirable. So, uh, at first, I didn't have the, uh, the means to be able to pick that up, but eventually, I did pick up a ship that could fit into there, Starfare. And, uh, basically, I don't know if it was Italia or the Starfare that ended up giving me the R&K, but the R&K was the go-to. But this extra large area view seems to be tied to the location and it is the only option is the area view at least in this size and scale. And you are locked to that size. Um, so the bigger the ship you have, just like the old days, the bigger your hangar. So if you like wanted to come in here and spawn a 125A, you're still going to be sitting inside this hangar, this massive hangar with a tiny little ship. And I, I think that has a hidden benefit because you do have, once again, these dang elevators are so much of the space because they're it's already a huge space. Um, what you end up with is this bizarre situation of you just have these ridiculously over-the-top uh, size and scale places. The tax... I'm going to try not to butcher this. Tasuku uh, mo models. That's the gold ones. I think that's some of the referrals. Like when you get like 10 referrals or something. Um, that's the gold series one. 
And then there's one for the Hornet as well that I have. As you notice, they are just the glass containers. I want to give a nod um, to CIG's team for weighting them on the bottom. <laughs> So when they when you drop them not perfectly with this tractor beam, which is a once again a new thing, it's not like the old days where you snap them in, you just go to the blue snaps and it just appears. Uh, they work appropriately. So somebody probably was play testing this, and was able to do that from from the beginning. So credit where credit is due. So while the piano had to be propped up against the wall, and <laughs> in order to get it to 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 sit right. And uh, the one fish tank doesn't have a bottom to it. It's okay because it's not visible. Um, most of the things that can be pulled out of the out, 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 out of the out of the warehouse elevator um, are basically weighted correctly, so they will fall and land on their feet just like a cat, which is kind of cool. So I, I can't help but wonder if that is part of the reason some of the stuff is not able to come out. Um, so it's not rigged up for tractor beam, and it's not weighted on the bottom yet, etc., etc., etc. This one item that's like a T-shape, it's like really throwing the gravity through a loop. Um, you can walk into this thing and like, bump it around really, really easy. And it wants to fall over uh, when it gets tapped by anything. This thing ain't great. This is another one of those models, um, holders. And uh, while it's open, so it's probably very easy to mount the models onto this once they are tractor beamable, or I guess you'll carry them over. I'm not quite sure. But uh, the thing itself is not very reliable. Uh, you know, those plates are supposed to be like, I guess, magnetic or some other mechanism to hold in place the items. So they shouldn't, it should not be so easy to knock this thing over. Be kind of funny though if it all it was full of models and they they keep freak out because they fall over, but uh, they all stick like glue to the sides of it while it falls, it spins and stuff. Um, I tested a weapon just to see what happened. Tested a hat by the way, and it's the same deal as like if you pick it up out of an item or somebody gives you something, it appears in a box, like a container, like a cargo container. So the reason I tested that was, um, can you take a set of armor? or a shirt from you know one of the IAE years that you're, you really like the logo of or you're trying to show off you know your your years of experience or even just if you want to do some history like say you have one of the trophies from one year so you could maybe have an IAE shirt from that year you know and maybe a bomber jacket uh, from different events like Invictus um, doesn't really work that well also, the weapon seems to have a ton more mass than everything else. So just be aware of that. I probably won't leave the weapon laying out. I'll put that back on the on the hang. Because if you do have somebody who's just coming in and mess with you, um, what will end up happening probably is they could tractor beam that weapon and just swing it around like a, like a sledgehammer and uh, knock everything else over. That thing's easy to knock over, but everything else seems... To, this thing has like the least mass and it's got like weird gravitational uh, <laughs> factors going on with it. Uh, once again, rotate as your friend, rotate as your friend and um, work through it um, if, if you really want something out there. Um, like I said, the weapon seems to have more mass than everything else. You can't lean it on stuff. You can't put it on stuff um, comfortably. So if you're looking for a prop, I would probably lean it up against a proper wall. But I, it's still risky. I have to leave that out while other players can manipulate these things. Eventually, it'll require players in your party to uh, touch stuff inside your hangar. So like, if somebody's a troublemaker, you just kick them out of your party. But um, obviously, in the PTU this early on, um, that's not really working out. Um, these items are like glitched in. They're stuck inside the hangar, warehouse, elevator, and um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I think there's a lot to be enjoyed here, and um, it's really vindicating to have these controls and mechanisms in place and get back equipment that's ours. It's been sitting on our, my hangar on the website for years and years and years. 
And it's like, what, you know, what, what is there to show for it? You know, and this is it. You can finally show these items to your friends, family, workmates. And uh, that's pretty damn slick. So here's some models, for example. Here's how they look. Uh, placeholder items, they do not allow you to take over. But you can see what some of them are if you just try to drag it over there and it gives you the warning. Some of them still just say placeholder. Some of them actually say what they are. And uh, <laughs> it's, um, it's it, it, yeah, it's bittersweet, but at the same time, I like where it's going. Finally able to use some of this equipment again. Uh, finally able to get the uh, promise of being able to use the piano as promised uh, by CIG all those many years ago that you, if, even if you don't own a Phoenix you can put the Hartwell 88G into your hanger and utilize it there as a flare item that would be pretty damn slick right well guess what it's a thing now um this also highlights things that are missing so if CIG if you ever find yourself watching this uh Vending machines. I want a Big Benny's vending machine. That should be a subscriber flare item, and then there's like a limited edition version, and then there should be like another version that's that's like pet, you buyable in game, or maybe there's a cool mission. Like you gotta you gotta save it from pirates. Like pirates stole it from a station, <laughs> and you gotta go hunt down the pirates. And your reward, at least the first time you do it, is a big Big Benny's vending machine. And uh, you take that back to your station or warehouse of your home and then bam you're able to just take it this example of that left click kind of snap grab um with the with the hanger but yeah so there's the hartwell adhe flying through the air inside a hanger for the first time maybe ever because this thing was promised it's an extremely rare item and uh the only way to mount this before was to go into the vma of the vehicle maintenance uh, assembly and uh, mount it to your Phoenix and then play it there. As a reminder, it only has one song currently, the Moonlight Sonata. You cannot manually play anything. And the volume is not that low on it, but the, the uh, ambient noises inside the hangar are just a little high right now, and there's no way to kind of adjust those without also making the Hartwell sound less and loud. <laughs> but I'm going to try to be quiet for just a moment so you can get an idea. So that's the Hartwell for you. It is, I would say, a little bit emotional for me. Uh, once again, uh, when I first picked that up, it was a very cheap pickup. 
and I couldn't afford a Phoenix. I was broke. Uh, so um, it was something that was like a, a promise of like, oh, well, I can at least use this thing inside the hangar. And not once was I able to. Uh, being able to suddenly uh, utilize it in this way after all these years is really special. Uh, to me, anyway. And I understand that not everybody gets that. Whatever, I respect that. And for the record, yes, I do hope that they at least sell a version of it to everyone. Just like all of these flare items should be sold to everyone. And um, for those who are collectors that are gnashing your teeth, yeah, sure. I mean, a version that has a slightly different paint job, a slightly different name, cool, whatever. That's fine. I'm fine with that, too. I'm not that, like... You know, everybody should have everything. But, um, you know, a Hartwell 89G, any Hartwell 88 um, uh, F or an R or something, <laughs> slightly different color scheme, and bam, there it is. <laughs> fine with it. Absolutely fine with it. Because I think one thing you got to remember is if these items stay super rare and super old and what is that and, you know, some of the newest devs barely even know what these are, and they're looking through the models on the database. Uh, they're not gonna, they're not gonna put resources to that. But if it's something that you know we can fix up the old version and then repaint, uh, put a new paint scheme on it, a slightly different livery, whatever, um, and then sell it to everybody and, and everybody can enjoy it. Suddenly now it becomes like a critical item. You know, it becomes something that like should get fixed up should get uh, the fish set up in it correctly and the models snapped in correctly and the Hartwell being able to be manually played with the keyboard or uh, like a normal keyboard as in like literally the, the letters on your keyboard uh, or the numbers <clears throat> or at the very least add some extra songs they don't have to be fancy songs you know I hear that this game called Star Citizen has quite a lot of songs. You know, I, I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> Just putting it out there. But, um, you know, the thing is, um, the, uh, the, the, the overall idea is what can you make this? And I, I think, is it, is it your own? Is it really all the hype is? Because, man, this has been huge amounts of delays, probably a month more than everybody anticipated before this was finally hitting the dang waves. Is it worth it? I think it is. I think this is something everybody's been waiting for. There's two things that so many people have been begging for for so long, including myself, and that is your own hanger, your personal hanger. And this is the first step in that direction, no matter how rough around the edges it is. And then the other thing is your outpost. Being able to build your own place in the in in the in the planets, the moons, and the asteroids of these systems. Being able to enjoy those, and then taking that and expanding it to multiple star systems, entire constellations, an entire verse being built up over time. You know, th 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 this is something that we need to start slowly but surely kind of expanding our reach and expanding our goals and uh, these type of technologies I think are critical and particularly the hangar having personal hangers that truly are personal hangers having physicalized cargo of 3.24 um, is just absolutely a huge step forward and I, I think it, it, be careful throwing stones about this um, in a rough state because that's kind of the point is that when something is in the PTU, the test universe, uh, it basically it is still in a constant build after build as improvements. So the only thing I do recommend is that if you or your friends, your org mates, your family are coming back and saying, man, we had a really bad experience. This really sucked, you know, last week. Try again. Give it another shot, especially if there's been two or three patch notes since then especially on the PTU, you will find that like rapidly there's changes made made over and over again. And many bugs are, are beat. Some new bugs are found. <laughs> but many bugs are beat. And um, remember, try to have a thicker skin. 
um, players that are acting foolish, it's not a big deal because literally the next build, everything's back again to normal. And um, remember, uh, one of the other neat things about the, um, the objects being able to be pulled through the storage locker systems is that if uh, you have subscriber items, freebies, earned items, rare items, whatever, um, you will be able to pull those back through and replace them. So it, while it's not in yet, this is something that we are very excited about seeing because that's uh, another part of this whole promise is like that being able to make it your own, being able to replace these things that are supposed to be rare and whatever, that, but you've lost them fair and square in some, some nefarious reason or not so nefarious, glitchy reason, you shouldn't feel like you're trapped without it for months uh, or have to do a character reset and destroy some of your progress just to get it back. That was me testing the other cargo elevator, sorry, warehouse elevator. It's going to take you a while to remember that and memorize it. And um, this is the other end of the hangar, the extra large air of view hangar at New Babbage. And what you'll note is that there's additional elevators that's down at this end. Alongside that warehouse elevator, there's an additional ASOP. There are the storage lockers. And these storage lockers are functional. They're glitchy, but they're functional. And you will see other people's names on some of these elevators because that's the last place those elevators went to. I'd be curious in the future is if they don't mark them. And I would also wouldn't be shocked if they have some type of AI queue, type not AI, but an automation that basically queues up the elevator and sends it back to the uh, to the to the spaceport. So you don't have like elevators just trapped at different places sitting there. Um, and then they have longer distances to have to clear to get from player to player to player and also give names out to other players like, oh, that's so-and-so's living here or out here. Because I don't like that type of information being shared. While if you're standing in the spaceport, you'll see that person run by, sure. I don't like the idea of having everybody have their names or their hangers and lights about who's staying around and whatever. Especially because right now it could take longer for cargo to function. And as you can see, there's ASOP terminals on both ends. This is that Microtech t-shirt I was talking about earlier. This is the full process now. So if you buy something, it gets put into your, lo not your local inventory, but the, the overall inventory for this specific area. So this is new Babbage's. And then when you go over to the storage access lockers, what you'll see is that it's not in your personal, but it is inside your warehouse. So once again, I just bought that shirt. Scroll down, and at the bottom here, we will find my Microtech shirt. I use this later to test inside the inside there. Now, if I was going to take that, I would hold left click and drag that shirt to the left to put it into my uh, my my store my like my local storage. And you'll see that there's a certain amount of SCU there. And then you hit open drawer in the bottom. And that would pop it open. So then your character could grab something, and then you'd have the container. And you could hand it off to someone else. You could sell it. You could do whatever the heck you want with it. But uh, the point is that it's yours. You have access. Just because you can't just hit the I key and go doesn't mean that you don't have access to your stuff. Those containers are everywhere. I'm going to have a lot more coverage at 3.24, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to my long-term subscribers especially that have uh, stuck with me throughout the hiatus of the dry spell that this was. And also, uh, if you made it this far, I, I have a plan to kind of have a few real-world videos discussing the Luna, the moon, right? Um, and I, I'm curious if this, if this is something that people are actually interested in. I have quite a passion for the topic and I like to try to discuss like all the different types of skills and capabilities you would need to make it on the moon and about how it's not just a place for astronauts in the future it's it's a place for every type of skill set and um, you know some of the things to better study it I'd love to go into those topics I'm just a little nervous about the algorithm and uh, subscribers sticking around through that process I'd like to hear some input if you're really interested and um, I'm going to stop talking because I think I just hit the, f I'm hitting the 40 minute mark. <laughs> so happy 3.24. Hope to see you in there. As a reminder, if, uh, if you ever want to do testing with me, I'm always on. I'm not 
I'm not, I do respond to everybody. <laughs> and uh, if you need, if you want to borrow a ship, especially in testing, I really don't mind. Uh, and that goes for ground vehicles as well. All right, take care.